Hey guys, today I wanted to bring you a quick review on the new CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream. I got mine from Ulta, I actually ordered it from Ulta's website. I have it in the shade Light Medium, and it does come in a range of six shades. It goes from fair to deep, which is a little bit more diverse, I would say, than some um, BB creams from the drugstore, and I got mine for between eight and nine dollars. And size-wise, you are getting one fluid ounce. It's pretty much CoverGirl's standard squeeze tube that they've done with other products as well. This BB does not contain any SPF, but it says it is oil-free, won't clog pores, suitable for sensitive skin, and lasts all day. Those are just the claims here on the bottle. So in this video, I'm going to definitely address application, coverage, staying power, and compare it to a couple of other both high-end and drugstore BB creams that I see some similarities with, and just kind of let you know what comes out on top. But overall, just in terms of application, with this product, I was pretty impressed from the first time that I put it on because I thought, okay, this is about a medium coverage, and that's not just medium coverage on some BB cream or tinted moisturizer scale. That's pretty much, you know, considering the way foundations go on, this is kind of like a medium coverage foundation, but it still has the feel and kind of the slip and the consistency of a moisturizer. I have applied it various ways. I've used uh, beauty blender type sponges, I've used my fingers, and also uh, a more dense brush like this. And I think any of those methods really can work, but if you're interested in really maximizing the medium and buildable coverage that this product has, I do think a dense brush works really nicely. So in this video, I use my Sigma F80 and about like a large pearl sized amount of this product and I just dotted it all over my skin and then blended it in, kind of buffed it in with this brush. And it's very easy to blend. You don't have to work too quickly because like I said, there is that kind of moisturizer element to this product that doesn't allow it to set too quickly on your skin. So you do have time. And then if you want to, you can add a little more product and actually build coverage in certain areas. And it doesn't look too apparent, you know, it doesn't look too heavy on the skin, but you can see the matte effect, I think, immediately after the product is applied. One of my biggest issues though with this product is that it's got that BB cream name and it also does not contain SPF. Many BB creams on the market I feel like have been capable of you know combining some SPF you've got that moisturizer element you've got that foundation like coverage and you know you've come to expect that you won't need all those different layers on your skin separately so with this you know while I do feel like it can have adequate moisture for my combo type skin as is I still need the sun protection so I always put something under this um, lately it's been my Kiehl's ultra facial moisture with the SPF 30, but I just want you to know I'm not applying that out of necessity for extra moisturizer, extra hydration in my skin. It's just kind of what needs to be done if I want some sun protection. After I get this on, um, then I go in with an under eye corrector like Benefit Erase Paste, dab that on my darkest areas, and maybe use more of a standard concealer on other areas if I need it. In this video, you're seeing the Maybelline Age Rewind and Neutralizer. Just blended that out with my Sigma P80 brush. Uh, I didn't have a damn and beauty blender handy at the moment, otherwise I typically would use that. And then in terms of setting powder, as I've been testing this product out, I've tried to keep the setting powder very, very minimal. So I will set my under eye area and I will apply it like just, you know, around the nose area. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for the powder. And that kind of takes me right into the staying power discussion with this product. It does a really good job. And I don't have the oiliest skin ever, but my nose can be a problem area, you know, for combo type skin, you guys know that's generally where something will start to break down. And I haven't seen that anytime I've worn this product. And just the other day I was wearing it more outdoors. I was sweating a little bit, definitely around my hairline, but I didn't see this product get too terribly affected by it. I think it's a matter of really understanding where are your problem areas, where are your oil prone areas, and you know, cover those with some sort of powder. It doesn't have to be any certain powder either. I've had all day successful wear with this product, whether I've put Milani Multitasker on top, uh, my Chanel Double Perfection Lumiere, or L'Oreal True Match. And like I said, I'm not doing an all over face powder mask, but I'm just doing it pretty much on my nose, maybe a little on the forehead. If you have really dry skin, I don't know that this product is really geared toward you to begin with, and you're probably going to want to go toward one of those BB creams that has a little bit more radiance infused, but I think the oily to combo people are the ones 
who are probably going to see the best look overall on their skin, which the finish is not too heavy. It doesn't look too makeup-y. Keep in mind, this still kind of has a consistency of a tinted moisturizer type product, but it definitely does do some mattifying and can get me through a day. Now, a couple of other BB creams that I have to kind of pull into the conversation because I know I've talked about them quite a bit. One that's very comparable is this Rimmel BB cream, the 9-in-1 Skin Perfecting Super Makeup. I have this in the shade Light, and this has always been one that I've praised for the coverage and just the overall look on the skin. And this also manages to have broad spectrum SPF 25. So automatically, you know, this one, if we're talking drugstore BB creams, this one definitely hits the mark for me. I know they have a matte version that I haven't really played with too much. I did not like the Radiance version of this BB cream. The one with the blue cap has just always been a go-to for me. So if I'm in the drugstore, you know, I think this is good. You know, it's definitely got its redeeming qualities with the staying power and the nice coverage, but if you can pack in a little SPF, it definitely kind of takes it up a notch. And then, um, just to compare coverage-wise to the IT Cosmetics CC Plus, this has an SPF 50, um, and this has amazing coverage. Whereas the Rimmel and the CoverGirl are more like a straight-up medium coverage, this goes more toward full coverage, so I really like that about this product. It's got the perfect amount of moisturizer in it. I definitely don't need to even consider really adding that extra step or extra layer onto the skin. And the staying power is really good for me. They now have the illumination option. They also have a bronze type option. But if you are pretty adamant about sticking with the drugstore price range, I would go with the Rimmel BB cream. And then this one, you know, it's got a lot of good things going for it. If it could get that SPF in there, it would be much more on par with some other BB creams that I've used. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!